Brain dopamine levels are affected by a wide variety of conditions, including normal development and aging, a whole host of different neuropsychiatric disorders, the result of taking recreational drugs, or a variety of different prescribed medications. If one wants to predict the effects of changing brain dopamine levels on a specific behavior, then it's vital to know at least three different things. First, it's important to know which learning and memory system is mediating the behavior of interest. We now know that humans have a wide variety of different learning and memory systems that for the most part are functionally and anatomically distinct. Uh, the most important of these include declarative memory systems, which mediate all of our conscious memories and almost all the learning that occurs when you listen to a lecture or read a book. Declarative memory systems depend heavily on prefrontal cortex and medial temporal lobe structures, including the hippocampus. Another important system is the procedural system, which mediates the performance and learning of motor skills, and for example, learning to play a musical instrument. The procedural system depends heavily on the basal ganglia. And a third important system is the perceptual representation memory system, which mediates the familiarity that we feel when we hear a song or see a picture more than one time. Uh, the perceptual representation system depends heavily on sensory association areas of cortex. The second important thing to know is to what extent the brain areas that subserve these different learning systems are innervated by the dopamine system. Prefrontal cortex and medial temporal lobe structures receive heavy dopamine projections, so do the basal ganglia, but sensory association areas of cortex don't really uh, receive much dopamine at all. So therefore, anything that changes brain dopamine levels could have very significant and direct effects on behaviors mediated, mediated either by declarative systems or procedural systems, but the effect on behaviors mediated by a perceptual representation system are more likely to be indirect. The third thing that's important to know is the time course of the effect of the dopamine in the relevant brain areas. In the basal ganglia, there's a molecule called dopamine active transporter, or DAT, which binds to free dopamine and quickly clears it out of synapses. So, for example, if dopamine neurons in the substantia nigra pars compacta fire a phasic burst, dopamine levels will be elevated in basal ganglia synapses uh, very quickly, but because of the high concentrations of DAT, uh, the dopamine levels will fall back to baseline within just a few seconds. In contrast, in cortex, there's almost no DAT, so a phasic burst of dopamine neurons in the ventral tegmental area, for example, will elevate cortical dopamine levels but the dopamine levels are likely to stay above baseline for as long as 20 or 30 minutes. Therefore, transient changes in brain dopamine levels can have very important, significant effects on behaviors mediated by declarative memory systems, but the effect on behaviors mediated procedurally are likely to be quite minor. If you'd like to know any more about uh, these topics, please read our paper. Thank you very much.